Hi everyone, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you and I'm here with one of probably what are going to be the most popular, one of the most popular Asus boards with this refresh of Z790 and that is the Dark Hero. Uh, normally the Dark Hero and the Strix are the ones that uh, create the most views for me on the channel. So that's why I've made sure that we've got testing done on both of them for launch please go and check the website and the channel for other videos and other reviews that we are doing though. Now I do have the board by the side of me here because I've not long finished uh, testing it or at least this was the last one I tested before I started doing everything else and doing all the other videos and it does look very pretty. It's obviously dark hero so it's very dark and uh, understated uh, and it does have the big screen at the back and I say screen, it's actually an RGB panel, then it picks up on the ROG logo on said panel. It is very, very shiny though. So it does mean if like me, you have colored fans in, it's going to show up on that shiny panel an awful lot. Um, I know it would add a lot of cost, but I, that is definitely prime price, place for a massive screen up at the back there, rather than the tiny ones that we do have. And if you look at the uh, sort of secondary monitor, um, sort of external mini monitor things, the prices for those are actually starting to come down. So I think Asus could get away with uh, doing a um, spandangly version of this with a huge screen on it. Um, but obviously Asus tax is going to drive the price up. Now this is the, how we tested it. This is how we've done it. It looks all lovely but I do now need to strip this down so I can show you around the board. So underneath the hood up here are 20 plus one plus two teamed power phases at 90 amps. One of the reasons why I have the uh, formula here is they are actually incredibly similar. And uh, the VRMs are one of the bigger differences. This, the, the uh, Dark Heroes 90 amps, the formula is the same other than they are 105 amps. Other minor differences other than the water block are 2.5 gig ethernet, 5 gig ethernet. But beyond that, you'd have to look very carefully to notice any uh, actual differences other than the color to the point where you could almost say that the Dark Hero is the formula in black without water cooling and that's where you can save some money. But I will give you a look around the board so that you can get a good feel for it all. It is a chunky heavy board, thankfully not as heavy as the formula though, um, but you have two eight pins in the uh, top left hand corner where you would expect them to be and they are solid pins in there as well, as well as being shielded. You come across and then you have uh, four PWM uh, fan headers uh, the Q code reader or the PCI reader or the startup, there's many names that you can have for it. Then you have your first RGB that is a, a three pin addressable. Then you've got the retry button, start button and then the flex key. The 24 pin and the eight pin here are all solid pins. Now this eight pin here is so that this uh, USB C external or USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, for your cases. This is so that this will do up to 60 watt super fast charging. So if you want super fast charging, you have to plug this in. If you're not fussed about super fast char charging, then you don't need to plug this in and you can save your cabling. Then down the side, you can see a normal USB 3 here, a couple of SATAs. It does come with the easy release PCR Express button there are four NVMEs underneath this heatsink and a further one underneath this one, but the one underneath this one is PCI Express 5. These are all PCI Express 4 and go through the chipset itself. There's a small water cooling section down here, so you've got a water flow and a water in and out sensor. Another USB 3 down here, this one's shielded though as you can see and then a couple of usb 2s uh, three more fan headers along here and then i'll turn it this way around because you get three more rgbs here two are addressable one is a four pin non-addressable 
um, and you do get a couple of full length PCR Express 16 slots but this bottom one's only wired to eight times and then you've obviously got a four times one down there a better look at the power stuff now information on the power other than the amperage stuff that i've told you has been quite limited and what i have had uh, has been watermarked as well so it's been not ideal then uh, around the back you can see the layout for the io uh, wi-fi 7 over here no longer have to screw the antennas in they just pop and clip over like i said there is a 2.5g ethernet you get some USB uh, 10Gs. There's a 10G one. There's a couple more Cs there. These are all 10G. So you've got plenty of USBs, which I would say is a welcome addition because it has felt for a while that the USBs have been getting forgotten. Um, don't forget, though, if you have a lot of USBs, uh, sort of like your keyboard, your mouse, that sort of thing. One of the things I do to help with cabling is I get a USB hub, uh, plug it into a USB 3 and then hide it underneath my desk and then run my mouse, my audio, my keyboard into that uh, and it means that you don't have so much plugged into the back of your PC. But, you know, that's a setup kind of scenario uh, in case you wanted it. I'll just give you a quick look at the formula so that you can see it is all very familiar the caps are all in the same places the chokes are all in the same places there is a connector missing on the dark hero underneath here uh, but that powers the lcd screen that's up here and like i did say the formula does have 5g ethernet rather than um uh and these do support thunderbolt as well so that's a worthwhile addition uh, or worth mentioning for any of you out there that are interested now performance wise one of the first things i'll say and it's something i'm going to be stressing with all the boards if you end up buying an i a 14th gen i7 or i9 for this you're going to need to undervolt the cpu um, unless you're planning on uh, de-lidding going direct die and going balls to the wall then you're going to suffer even with a large AIO. With the i7 and the i9 in this board and the others, I was hitting 100 degrees, even with a H170i at 100% fan speed and the, uh, the pump set to extreme. Did manage to take the volts down from 1.4 down to 1.3 though, although I am going to do a guide to show you how you can turn the volts down because some of you may not be able to get down as far as three, some may, of you may be able to get further down than three because of the silicon lottery. CPUs are not all made the same. Yields are very good, but the voltage differences can be quite uh, large. Anyway, I did manage to get the i9 down to 1.3. I did manage to get the i7 down to 1.2. There's vast differences. This was what I've been trying to explain. Um, and by doing that, I actually managed to get the CPU temperatures dropped by over 20 degrees. It made a huge difference. So that's why I'm going to say everyone needs to uh, undervolt. And <clears throat> they've got a safe boot button on these. You could save your undervolt um, settings to that or just save an overclocking profile so that uh, you can always reload it and go in and tweak and it doesn't matter if things go wrong because you have a BIOS clear button on the back. If everything goes wrong, you flick that and it just goes back to complete stock and then you can start again. Oh, right, so must uh, undervolt. Temperatures, uh, I, it's just required. I think if you are buying one of these for overclocking, then at the end of the day, you are going to need an AIO as a bare minimum. And even then, I think it's going to be quite a loud process if you're doing multi-core stuff with like uh, Blender, video editing, editing, stuff like that. Games is a little bit more relaxed temperature wise and load wise, but anything full blown benchmark or multi-core is going to need lots of airflow and just lots of cooling. Uh, performance wise, other than that, it's a very good 
capable board. The VRMs, despite being only 90 amp, did not go above 46 degrees. And that is something uh, kind of to keep in mind as well. And that's with an i9 being absolutely stressed out to the max. They just do not get warm. Uh, uh, and so do you need water cooling on your VRMs? If you think about it at that point, I would suggest not. But if you were to, you know, really get them dragging even more power in, the power might go up a little bit more. Um, performance wise, games wise, it all ticks all the boxes. Uh, they're all very much, much the muchness. With the differences between the boards, especially between the Hero and the Formula, it's going to be about aesthetics. Do you want a black one? Do you want a white one? Um, if you don't want to spend this much money, I'd suggest look at the Strix because they, like I said, they all perform uh, very similarly. Uh, and in reality, like I said, they all needed the volts turning down. We tested them all with the i9. And uh, like I said, it's genuinely about aesthetics. The extra stuff that you get on the board, um, like connections and cooling and stuff like that. So very pretty board is a bit of a sidestep but at least they've got a very dedicated blackboard to kind of go alongside the very dedicated whiteboard that they have and it's kind of one of the reasons why i wanted to show you both um and the wi-fi 7 is going to be great uh long term for any of those of you out there that uh, have better than gigabit ethernet um sorry better than gigabit internet it is coming even i'm on a solid one gig connection with fiber at home now and uh two and five are not very far away so uh and there are wi-fi asus do have a wi-fi 7 router um out there now as well so it could be an upgrade path in time if you wanted it i'm personally looking forward to the wi-fi 7 rog ones though and i'm looking forward to getting to play with those as soon as they decide they are ready anyway uh, cracking board let me know what you think like subscribe and comment don't forget if you'd like to see more graphs you can go to the OC3D website mobile works on the website now brand new website from the ground up it's so much better hopefully you're enjoying it please let me know in the comments underneath but for now this has been Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you out Ding.